أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah, we thank Him for all the blessings upon us, we praise Him for making us among the Muslims, and we praise Him for the Qur'an and for the blessings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Him alone without any partner. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His servant and He is the Messenger, the seal of the prophecy. May Allah send blessings and salutations upon him. Alhamdulillah, it's another blessing in you know, a meeting we have, and I think this is the last meeting we should make uh, on the Fridays. So the rest of the meeting will be during Ramadan, inshallah. If we have time, we will try to take time after we finish eating, take 15 minutes to remind ourselves about how to pray, inshallah. Since a lot of people will be coming, a lot of guests will always follow the guests of Allah, which is the month of Ramadan. And I just recommended all of us who use the masjid. Uh, it's not right for you to see a brother or sister in the masjid who never show up since last Ramadan. And you tell them that, oh, Ramadan brought you. Of course, everybody knows that they came just to benefit, take benefit. Uh, from the month of Ramadan, but it's good to encourage one another. You know, depend on how we treat each other, it will you know help all in you know, all of us uh, each other to make it better in the future. It's not right a person who never show up in the masjid he came, then we be mean to him. He will never show up again. So may Allah give us that soft and uh, that forgiving heart, because. Those who, who don't use the public, to the Jama'ah, they don't use the masjid, you will see them in a different thing in the, during the month of Ramadan. Inshallah, before the first day, inshallah, we'll have time to really remind one another about it. Uh, some people, maybe they will come and they will mess the masjid. Don't worry. Take care of it. It's the month of what? Reward. Getting more reward as much as you can. It's not a salam. It's not the house of anyone, it's the house of Allah. Someone miss, you clean after it, and then you tell them, oh brother, uh, next time if you can do this, this, you, you know, you have reward, and then you have reward for giving him advice. And I think this is the one part of the hadith we read it, we were reading last, last week. The hadith is the hadith Abu Huraira. And we all know Abu Huraira, right? Even last time I gave the, the children the name, uh, the, Homework, what is the real name of Abu Huraira? Since the beginning of these classes, we have been saying a lot of people know Abu Huraira, but they don't know the real name of him. A lot of people say Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, but they don't really know his real name. Actually, we name our children Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is a nickname, but his real name is there. Abu Huraira, his real name is there. In the Prophet said he who gave him that name and then in everybody he loves everybody to call him the same way. It's like uh, one Sahaba, if I still remember, the Prophet called him like one the, a person of one eye. Okay, that's what he called him one day. And he doesn't know anyone calling him anything else except that name. You understand? If it is you and I, we will fight our way. So, so whatever comes from the boss of us is all blessing for us. It's all blessing. Uh, <coughs> Abu Hurairah, what is his real name? Is a homeway. 
all of us again. Eh? Abu Huraira, his real name. Homework. Homework? I give you guys homework. Oh, okay. Oh, you say his name is homework. No, his name is not homework. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Inshallah, we'll try and we'll take uh, 15 minutes. No! It's homework. Bring it next time. It's not the living one. Uh, Inshallah, we'll take just 15 minutes or 20 minutes. we finish up with the hadith and we'll uh, try to talk about the matter that is coming a little bit. It's good to mention that also, Inshallah. Maybe the Imam, you know, you choose that, right? The whole topic. It was Ramadan, right? Perfect. So we don't have to come back to it. Don't worry. Sorry. In the authority of Abu Huraira, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, is the hadith number 26 of the book of Imam al nawawi Ali Rahmatullah. We read him. If you have the book on your phone, you can read, you can try to find, inshallah. On the authority, the, uh, Abu Huraira, he reported that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كل سلامة من الناس عليه صدقتن كل يوم تطبع فيه الشمس And then he said, تعذل بين الاثنين صدقة وتعين الرجل في دعبته فتحمله عليها أو ترفع له عليها متاعه صدقة والكلمة الطيبة صدقة وبكل خطوة تمشيها إلى الصلاة صدقة وتميت الأذى عن الطريق صدقة. He said every joint in man in man has upon it charity every day the sun rises. In all our body has bones and joint like you know because it's small bones we have like this one it's called sulava you know there is bones a little bit here and then it's connected to one another it's like that so. Upon each and every bones, small bone we have, and the big ones, it, upon it is mandatory for you to what? Give out charity. Because you all read that one. What is that, please? Uh, you read that one. What is that, please? Don't let me ask the sisters because the sisters always know. No, no. Arafat. Summa la tus alunna yomi idin alin naim. Takasu. So to takasu. Perfect. Alhamdulillah. I don't have to jump to the lady side. So we have summa la tus alunna yomi idin alin naim. Alhamdulillah. Summa la tus alunna yomi idin alin naim. Alhamdulillah. Summa la tus alunna yomi idin alin naim. And you will be asked, you will be questioned about every and each single blessing that Allah has bestowed upon you. Free time. Allah will ask you about it. For you to be strong, Allah will ask you about it. For you to have uh, good health, Allah will ask you about it. For you also to be among the people who are knowledgeable is a ni'mah, Allah will ask you about it. For your Islam, Allah will ask you about it. And for each and every part of your body, I want to ask about it. The, you know, this, uh, the delicious chicken that you eat, or chepigen, or chepigene, you have a, Allah will ask you about it. The good tea that you drink, Allah will ask you about it. The water you drink, Allah will ask you about it. For each, every single blessing, Allah will ask you about it. We don't talk about the savings we have in our account. That is something else. We don't even talk about that. We understand the savings and the, you know, all these buildings and the clothes we have. Allah will ask you about it. Wallah. That's the reason why it is so uh, awful and it's so sad to see a person Allah bless with something and you use it the evil way. Allah is a blessing for you to have the phone, this kind of phone we have. You have internet, you have the whole Islam in me. All, in, any kind of book you want, you can download it from this phone. 
freely. The most half you even choose, you will sub this one, this one, this one doesn't look nice. And you delay it, you bring another one. And I always mention here that we grow up, we don't see the Quran like that. The day they will grow up as a Mus'haf, we always look around. And we were young, like 90s. Like, it's not like far away, no. 20 years ago. 30 years ago. It's just like that. In the village, in one village even, is only one person who has a copy of Mus'haf. One village. The whole village, so anyone who wants, but it is paper by paper. So someone will come and just need only Sabis Marotti Kalala, then he will give him that he will write his name. You take Sabis Marotti Kalala part. So you have like five days or Juma to Juma to bring it back. Another one will take only one part or something like that to the brood, and so on and so on. To go and write down. And they go when they go, they write a lot of copies. It's not like they have copy machine. They don't have. They write. Me, I see my uncle, he has like three copies of what Quran he has written himself. And when you see their handshift, so I had writing, mashallah. I say handshift, this is uh, German, German, right? Handwriting is what? It's so nice. But today we have it freely in our book, forms. That time they don't have Abu Huraira and all those that we have, brothers. But they were so truthful. The reason why we cannot compare the, uh, ourselves to them. May Allah have mercy upon them. The, the mistakes that have, you know, fell in the deen, may Allah forgive them. And we believe Allah will forgive them because, because they were sincere. They were really sincere. It's because the knowledge did not come enough for, to them. But today we have knowledge and we still want to follow their mistakes. Instead of us following their good, their good part, you see a lot of people, they just go, oh, that's what our father used to do. Your father used to visit their old friend every Friday. Do you do that? Your father would go to the farm. He will take out all the food, and all the people who carry the food, he will send them to other houses. Send it to the, you come home only one, one, one person come only a home of food. But you, next to you, a person is dying just to have maybe a hundred dollars to uh, heal himself, to go to the hospital. You don't say, you don't do anything. And you will tell us that, you, you know, it's our father and so on. And I will forgive them and you and I, you don't have any space. So this, all this is blessed for us. Allah will ask us about it. So if you use your phone to call and gossip him, the phone itself is, the door of care will testify against you. Let us have ways to really have a lot of things that will testify in our favor. <coughs> right now, you know, my sister was, you know, was talking about how hard it is during Ramadan to stand during, during the prayer. And I was telling them, you know, how easy it is. When it is a uh, night prayer, long prayer, even the Prophet used to sit down sometimes. When he's reciting long, he sat to sit down. He will sit down reciting. When he's close to make Roko, then he will stand up and make Roko and continue his prayer. For you to, when I said it, like the sisters, they were like, Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them, mashallah. They were like, ah, ah, ah. At the same time, you see an old person who can be your grandmother who is standing up. You feel ashamed to, to sit down. And I was like, yeah, this is a kind of race we should do, competition. You understand? So sometimes, sometimes you see, the, you realize certain blessings we have, okay, that we don't take advantage of. For you now, the way you do Rukul or Allah, it will be a time you cannot do Rukul properly. Look around you. If you don't have old, old person in your house, you have in your neighborhood, in the masjid, you have them. Some people, it's not because they are old, but because of the test Allah gave them. Today, you and I, we are healthy. We don't know tomorrow, brothers. It's not because you are in worshiping, Allah is not going to test you. Allah tests more even those who, who are in worshiping. Oh, what? And when you, you learn about this history, or story of those good people, majority of them, 
when they get to certain age, Allah, they lose their what? Their sight, their eyes. They don't, they don't see. The good people. The recently one, you know, the evil birds. He knows, he's not even, uh, he's not even, uh, he doesn't have his life, but subhan. But my joke of the even the Sahaba, there will be a time Allah will just close their eyes. And me, I sit down and I look like it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. How? Because we all know that day and day, the world becomes so bad. It's bad and worse. So these people, they have seen a lot of good things that Allah doesn't want them to see bad. So Allah will close their eyes. That's what I mean. I, you know, I, that's the, the wisdom behind it. Because I have read, I have read the story of all those people, and at the end, the Sahaba they said they, they lost, they lose their eye. This one, this is, he lose his eyes before he, he passed away. This one, the same person. Like, hmm, what kind of a, a legacy is that? And I think, I think I was like, this is, this is true. And one, my son was telling me about one sheikh. A sheikh that he, you know, who was taking care of him there in, uh, in Medina. He said, the sheikh was a healthy, he grew up in a healthy family. So they have business in Kuwait, in the, he doesn't even have time. He already memorized time in Quran, but when he was young, but he doesn't have time to sit down and practice and teaching and stuff. Always driving, you know, going up and down here. Like, Making all the talk, you have money, you don't have time. Then Allah what? Allah tests him with his eyes. They took him everywhere in Europe. They brought him here. No, he couldn't get here. He couldn't get back his his uh, his sight. So then he he just gave away. He gave away everything. He just sit down in the masjid. And he said, "This is seventeen years. You know what? Muhammad was telling me seventeen years now. He never even." Lose, okay, takbir al ihram in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for every single prayer. Seventeen years old, he never missed the first takbir al ihram. Allah, no. And when he sit down, he see that he is reading his Quran by memory. Since he doesn't have eyes, he doesn't use the he only memorizes. And Allah. You know, the beauty of Allah, you know, the powerfulness of Allah is that when He took away your sight, Allah, your memory becomes so strong. When it enters, it's hard to, to come out. Because today, if you see me struggle, instead of me saying, Surat al Lazina Nabta I will tell you, Surat al Lazina Fuma Fisa Mawat Mata, it's not for no reason. It's for a reason. It's our eyes are looking at haram everywhere. So it takes away. The strong, you know, for in the strongness of what? The strength of your, your, your memory. Haram, when a person is always, you know, seeing haram, hearing haram, their, you know, brain will, will what? Will not go, it's not going to be strong like it before. It means they're not going to be smart as before, always. Especially when it comes to the word of Allah, the word of Allah, the Quran. When you memorize it, and you gossip, you hear things that is not, it doesn't go together. You will struggle, struggle memorizing, but you will go away. It's people, other people so, hear problem, and you listen, you know supposed to. Just mind your business. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not easy, because you need discipline. A human being a Muslim, you need the discipline. You have to know that you don't need to hear about other people to be to be happy. Just take care of yours. And this is one of the sadaqah also. One type of uh, charity is what? If you don't give goodness, bring goodness to a person, so harm them. And it doesn't cost anything to not harm a person. Because smiling at a person even it, it demands you know, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, you know, sacrifice. But leave them alone. That will do no good. No idea. It's so simple. But we make it complicated in our life that other people's in problem even you know take away our tranquility. Why? Huh? And Allah is telling us, Ya ayyuhal ladina manu, alaykum. 
Es que ya se le acaba de caer las rayas, dice. Ya se mira. Ale, caminas. So, may Allah save us, brothers. So, Allah will ask us for every blessing, brothers. We have a lot of blessings. We have to use it in good way. You don't use it for harm. We had it. So, for every blessing, Allah will ask you. This is one of the blessings the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us our body, all our organs. Upon every and each organ, Allah will ask us. Allah is recommending us in charity. And at the end, we read it from the Sheikh the explanation. He said, that is like in the in the, in the body of a human being you see you will see 360 60 joints 360 is like in the days of one a year so who's going to even pay every day 360 who's who's ready to pay that today 360 tomorrow 360 huh? Your, your income is not your, what you get, get is they, they even doesn't reach that. How can, come you be able to do that? The reason why Allah has, it's not, it's normally supposed to be mandatory. Because he said, Kullu sulama min al nasi alayhi. What they say alayhi, it means upon you. So it's meant, it's, it becomes a command. But it's the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's not like if you don't do it, because the command, Allah has prescribed upon you the fasting. If that fasting of Ramadan, the person refuses to do it, then they are sinful. And when they think it's not a part of the deen, they are careful. You don't pray on them. When they say salam alaikum to you, you respond the way you want. And when they die, you don't take them to the graveyard of the Muslim. When people are praying for his denizer, you don't go. And you have to let them know that this person denied that fasting is not a part of the deed. Because some people, they pray. Someone he believes is not, uh, is a part of the deed, but he's not going to fast. All right? He has Laila, he's praying and so on. Okay? They do that. So their Islam is not complete. Because your, your, your Islam is built in five, upon five. So some people don't even pray. And this is how, it's if you want, you pray. If you don't want, you don't pray. Anyone who doesn't pray, and even though they believe, if it's a prayer, even though if they believe that the prayer is a part of the deal, but they don't pray, they are in your society. Someone who did not pray when they are alive. Why would they die? You want to, you want to go see, stand and pray for them? Huh? You know, in Senegal, we have people with the Akira. They don't, they don't have to pray. They yes. don't have to pray, they don't have to fast. Yeah, this is not, they are not even Muslim. They are not even Muslim. These people normally, if they say they are people who don't fast, they believe that it's not mandatory for them to fast to pray. Those people, they are not Muslim. We have to understand that. They are not Muslim. Even if they call themselves, they have three pieces and so on. And the boy and my, you know, thing like me here, well, they are not Muslim. They are not Muslim. We understand. So, may Allah save us, brothers. So, when you continue, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sheikh bring, he said, in a body of a human being, you will see 300 and how? 360 bones. So, it means you have to do, normally you have to do how many? 300 times and 60 charitable actions. But the Prophet of Allah is bringing us easy way to, to have actions. So the Shaykh is saying, uh, When the Prophet of Allah he said, A day when the day is uh, uh, the day of the sun rises, okay? The sun rises a day, you know that you have a day. Person, when you wake up, oh, the sun rise already. You look at the time, oh, the sun rise already. You have a day. So from that until the sun set down, you have to have a, a lot of act of, uh, of charitable action. All right. And he said, every day the sun rises your, uh, for you to solve problem between two people. It is for you a sadaqah, is a charitable action. You understand? 
and you know that when we live together, when we live in Jama, it's always fight and fight. It's normal. What is, we are human beings, it's normal. Even between two people who always say, oh, I love you, I, I want you, and so on, you know, they fight. Between you and your even mother, sometimes, when we start the sun, it's happen. But between you and your mother, be careful that your mother always has right. Your mother always has a right. Your mother always has a right. Then your father also has a right. Yes, right? The fourth time your father. So fathers, you have a right only the fourth time. <laughs> Wallah, even your mother take all your, your money and give it away to your siblings and so on. Don't worry. Who gave you that money? Allah. It's Allah who, because the way you will treat your mom in that way, he will bring more than that. Sure. It's not easy. Me speaking also. It's not like I'm, you know, it's, it's not easy. But you have to always try to what? Swallow and kill your anger and ego. And humble yourself. So the problems will always happen between two people. Two groups of people and so on. It's an act of charitable action for you to work, to go and what? Uh, try to fix their problems between two people. And, you know, two couples will come also problems, probably you heard about it. And this moment is the one of the moments that the Prophet said, even when you lie to fix between them, you will be rewarded. For example, you know, May Allah protect us. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad and I have a problem. Okay? And then, Allah like Qasim will just go, oh. Hey, Muhammad, you don't see? Imam even was saying that he loves you. He really appreciates you. Say, hey? But we just fought. See, yeah, oh. Forget about what happened. This is Shaitan's love. They say, right now, he was telling me even that he really loves you, and so on, and so on. And he said, he saw some last time he harmed you, and so on. And he will be like, huh? Then the next person will come back to me and say, oh, she Muhammad, Muhammad, oh, Muhammad was praising him. And so on and so on. Don't ask when we see one another, we'll just start greeting one another. You solve the problem. But today, what people do today? Nah, <laughs> come <laughs> A person will sit down and talk about the goodness of another human being, they will never report it to them. But but by, by mistake, let them just say something. Oh, right away. Oh, I think I'm going home. He's not going home. He's going somewhere. To report that, oh, I don't know how people can be bad. What happened? Oh, well, I can't believe it. What happened? Tell me. Ah, you know the brother. What brother? Brother Fozzi. <laughs> That's it. He make it even big now. What happened? Ah, <coughs> me, even me, I don't, I cannot believe. I cannot believe that people can live together and they hate one another like that. Oh! So, hey, I pray with him. So, oh, Fozzy, forget about him. When you see him from the south, go to the north. You understand? And then make it worse. And also, Fozzy will just see what Muhammad and him. He will just sit in his face. Yeah. Salam alaikum. <laughs> so this is what is happening between the Muslims and the Muslims. We are supposed to solve problems, but now we are the one who will create problems between brothers and sisters. What is our brothers? Some people they really want to even destroy the cops. Well, like these people, I will destroy them to to gain what. What are you going to gain? The Prophet Sallallahu is telling you here among the Sadaqah and everybody, we have to understand that the day of Qiyam, the way is so hard. Everybody will be under his, the shade of his Sadaqah, brothers. Everybody will be under the shade of what? His charitable action. So your Sadaqah, the way you will have the, the shade, it depends on how how good your sadaqah was and how, how fast your sadaqah was. 
and some people will drown on their what? Sweat. Because what? They miss that. So you and I will have opportunity for us. It's not only money that can give salah. Wallahi your actions. Tabassumuka bi wajiha akhika salah. For you to even smile. Oh, mashallah. Uh, you even have, that's what he said. He said, Al kalimat tayyiba, sadaqa here. He brought it. Al kalimat tayyiba, sadaqa. You just see Haji uh, 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 Qasim, you say, Oh, Haji Qasim, mashallah, you look so nice, beautiful, and you know, so so nice to thee, mashallah. And he will smile. And you see, Haji Qasim is smiling now, mashallah. <laughs> eh? It's sadaqa. So for you to not, you know, you see something you appreciate. Don't always be like when we teach him, okay? We grow up when we, they teach us, they will never appreciate what you have done. It's hard for a son to really appreciate what you have done. But I understand their, their wisdom also. They want you to do more. But the problem they don't understand also, some people need encouragement to do, you know, to continue. When a person comes and he really says, Oh, you oh, don't do anything. <laughs> Next day, they're not going to show up. They will run away. So always appreciate. Even in your house, sometimes certain things, you know, you know that your son or your, they don't listen and so on. One day, even if they just go and clean their own uh, dishes, so, mashallah, I'm so proud of you today. Especially, you know, I don't know, you know, our children here, they, they, they want that. Eh? So may Allah always give us a way to always, uh, always appreciate the good, good words. What is good words is from the Muslims. Evil words shouldn't come from the mouth of what? A Muslim, because your mouth is what a blessing. Some people wish they can even pronounce, pronounce something. And the Allah is recommending us. وَقُلِّ عِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ Tell my you know, servant to always say which what is good. When word want to come, make it you know the good thing. When people hear, they feel you know you know not lying. Nothing. When it comes to true, you tell the truth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Man kana yuri bilal wal yuri alahi falyakul khayr na ul yasqut." Ul yasqut. Anyone who believe in the hereafter and he believe in Allah should say. Something that is good. Or they should what? Keep it quiet. So it means if me is standing here, Ya Billah, and I'm talking evil, evil, it means till until now I do not believe to the day of Qiyamah and I don't believe to in Allah. Yeah, that's the meaning for this. We have to understand that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bring the condition, anyone who believe in the day of Qiyamah and believe in Allah should say something that anything that is good. Or they should what? Keep it quiet. So if I see a Muslim lying, gossiping, until now he has problem with his what belief. We just call one another, oh he's well, no, he's good man. That's that's from you. Allah never told you that. We always, you know, say it's good to always have that, you know, saying, but this is what we say. But the, the reality is from Allah. And Allah never told you that this this brother is good. Sometimes you think a person is good, but they are far away from Allah. Even you yourself, us, what you want, always look at yourself like you are not good. This is how you better yourself. But the moment you grab two pieces, you put the first one here, the three pieces, and you put it in the kufi, how? Oh, yeah, they are. That's it. That's it. Omar ibn al Khattab, he was telling even the Sahab, you know, the companions, those who were around him, he said, if there is someone, one person, who, whose action will never be accepted by Allah, it is honor. You see how, now he's saying it, yeah, he put he humble himself. But today you see, you know, brothers, eh, they will pray far away, the Imam will just go, really, 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 then he will stand next to the door, he will have siwak, like sweating, like, I'm like, oh, alive. And we did good. Who told you? Huh? Subhanallah. May Allah save us from us. When it comes to action, Allah, we have to be careful. And when you do action and act of worship, forget about it. Act like you never do any action. 
It will force you to always keep doing it. Keep doing it. May Allah clean our heart. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued, he said, The Sheikh brought, he said, well, kalimat, kalimat tayyib, which was uh, the one we, we brought? Sadaqah. Well, you could look what in tamshiha ila salat sadaqah. In any step, in every step you take going to, to observe the prayer is what? Charity. For you to, you know, to walk towards the masjid, come to pray, every step you take, in, it will consider like a charitable action. But to meet al-adha an al-tariq, sadaqah. For you also to what? Remove harmful things from what? From the street, from the, you know, the way that people use, it's a scary table action. And I give the example of someone, last time I give the example of someone who's even, you drive. You're driving on the road and you realize that the, the wind brought garbage on the what? In the middle of the road. You have time to always go around and go. But you know that if someone is really in going fast, in rush and they do not see it especially nowadays that everybody is using phones sometimes when they're driving is you know they can cause accident if this thing can cause accident just go and pack somewhere safely and you go you remove it you put it aside well is a digital you you walk in and you see something uh, broken glasses huh? you know that anyone who step and we have homeless people who don't have shoes when they step on it, it will cut them. Go and remove it. Even if it has alcohol, well, Allah brought the God to remove it. And the fact, if you see it and you let it there and someone got hurt, I believe you will be, you'll be crushed about it. So you always have to remove it, go and wash your hand. That's it. You see a person where they go, it can harm them. Do you know that something is there that is harming people? Just tell them, warn them. You don't let your brother go the moment they want they go and they want help. <laughs> you start laughing. This is not a kind of Muslim. But today there is Muslim who are doing that. A brother will come from Brazil, they got in that way and come, they try to find themselves then You have opportunity to you know send them somewhere where they can get a good job. Then you put them in a, in, a, in a place where they don't even pray. They don't even pray, then you will just say, <laughs> well, like, this is how we all start. Why you want your brother to start from where you start? Why? People, people still wonder, oh, you have to be patient. You people, you just want everything in the, the right way. Because they have you. If you suffer, it's for your brothers to come after to have easy. Why do you want to send them where you suffer? You know that you're suffering. And you have opportunity to go. If you don't have any you know, opportunities, there's no problem. But you know that there's a lot of ways to make him work. Well, while he's praying rightly and while he's not around the place. But no. We just want them, oh, they just want to make money when they just come here. Let them suffer. You'll get what? When they have money, it's not your part of money they will get. Leave them, let them. And then the fact when you show them right away, they will always be grateful to you. And the same way also when you send them the bad way and they know, they realize that you have ways to let them have good ways, that beginning, they will hold something on you. If Allah doesn't have a message for them. So brothers, we have to always try to remove harm in the life of others. If you cannot remove harm in the life of people, don't bring the harm. The lowest part of charity is what? That's what I mentioned. Is what? The lowest part of what? Charity, charity is what? Do not harm. That's it. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, uh, one of the iman is what? You prevent other people from your own harm. Your hand, the harm from your hand or from your tongue. But we insult curse and wish bad for other people to get one. So what means the other on the tariq? Sadaqah. And then in the Qadijah, I say, بَيْنَمَا رَجِلْ يَمْشِي بِتَرِيقٍ 
wajada gusna shawkin ala tariq right while a man was walking on a road he found a branch of what thorn all right you know thorn right they think that is uh, yes and fa'akharahu fashakara allahu lahu faghafara lah and he mean on the road and then he removed it he saw something harmful and he removed it then Allah showed thanks to him can you imagine Allah would show thanks to him God and forgive him and Allah forgive him forgive him so we enter in in the month of what forgiveness the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَهَذِهِ صَدَقَةٌ كَثِيرَةٌ فِي مُقَابِلَ هَذِهِ الْمَفَاصِلِ الَّتِي فِي كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ عَلَيْهِ صَدَقَةٌ ثَلَاثُ مِئَةُ وَسِتُّونَ صَدَقَةٌ كَيْفَ تُعَدِّيهَا اللَّهُ وَسَّعَ لَكَ الْمَجَالِ فَانْبِحْ لِنَفْسِكُ وَقَدْ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَيُجْزِئُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ رَقَعْتَانْ يَرْقَعُهُمَا مِنَ الضُّحَى Brothers, all this is supposed to be done 360 times charitable actions a day for you to save yourself from what? The punishment of Allah. Because it's mandatory for you to give charitable actions. But you do not do it, the Prophet said, so this deen is deen Yusuf. It's a deen of ease. Allah did not make you know, so, so, uh, so many, so, you know, too much uh, difficulty in this deen. The reason the Prophet said, anyone who brought difficulty in this deen, it will win over him. You will realize that they will run away from what they have, they were doing. You see, brother oh, oh, always, you know, Carry himself like that. What is that? The deal? No, 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 no. It's not the deal. Huh? It's not the deal. One day you see the brother. What happened? They run away from what they used to do. It's not because you just heard one child is saying something. You just take that. Oh, God. Huh? You tell people, you know, go, go. They, they bath. One day you will be. You will just. Oh, this is too much. You run away. I have seen a lot of people like that. A person has his. Uh, Workplace and he stopped working at all. Always walking, going to town, going from place to place, and he not study anything. Brother, you will bring your bicycle for the brother. You don't see him. What happened to the brother? They said, "Oh, he found the people. He is going to down. It's not about you go to down, brothers. But you have to always wait. You have your family to take care of, take care of, and this is a jihad for you to take care of your a family was going to jihad. What is any time you wake up, you're going to your job to take care of your family is jihad. You have to understand that. For all of us who migrate from those places we comfortable, we used to, and we come here so that our family member have good life, so life we are jihad. So you have to take it and think about it. Don't mess up. Don't spoil your action. He already gave you is jihad. Allah used you to feed other people, but like something wrong. So he left his job like that, you know, caring. You see them, they have even the stick. Because they said the Prophet used to have stick, and then they, they walk. The Prophet used to have the stick because they walk on the jungle sometimes. And he needed sometimes only something, he will kill it and so on. You as a young man, you, you have the stick in the street of, what are you doing with the stick? They have to the pool around from place to place and he stopped working. <coughs> he telling his, his wife, oh, if I brought food, we eat. If we don't grow food, we... This is not the deal. We want to stay hungry. When you take the, you know, the sister, her father was taking care of her. What do you mean she had to be patient and you can walk? So they do that. And after they brought fitna, like two years later, I came back. Uh, uh, he's doing really, no, no, he's in, at his job. He stopped eating the prayer, he doesn't pray at, at, at one time. Because you take it the way you're not supposed to take it. The deen you take it easy. The Prophet of Allah never come to make it hard on you. No, it's, it's things that really make easy your life. So if you see a person, the deen is so difficult for them, watch them. Watch them until the end. They take it so. You know, they don't extreme. Okay? We are not going to be too extreme and we're not gonna be you know too what? Too easy also. It's wasap. In what? 
in the middle. You don't go to extreme and you don't make it too easy. Ah, they will leave you as alone. He marries in the heart. He doesn't pray. No, 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 no. We don't, you know, you know that. You have to come and pray for it. We don't see in the mosque, we don't, we're not gonna, you know, you know make, make a, the, the Janazah pray on you, if you pass away. I mean, I say that. So he said, well, you just will be in bed, you can you can you can you can All this charitable action you're supposed to do, 360, upon your bones, those joints that Allah gave you, the two rakan that you will perform by the time of Goha will compensate everything. How many of us are preserving the prayer of Goha? How many of us? People are busy with their job that time. Some people even the prayer of a, during the prayer of a fight, uh, they don't even have time to pray. I see a brother who tell me that, oh, Imam, can I pray before the time so that I go to my job? My job will start early and the point is like 6 15. Can I? No, you cannot. I cannot give you. The, the time is the time. You cannot pray before, you cannot pray uh, after. If the time is the time. If the president gave you, he gave you a appointment, he said, I want to see you at 12 o'clock. Then he said, Oh, so I can just come. At 10, then you just take care of me. No. He has other thing. He knows the reason why he gave you that 12 o'clock. So we have to understand that Allah is the, the one who rule, who gave the ruling of this dream, and no one has to do anything. So the two rakat you perform during Doha, and Doha starts the moment the sun rises 15 minutes after it. The sun rises, the moment the sun rises, the haram for you to pray. Okay, until 15 minutes, from that 15 minutes, until like 20 minutes before Doha, that's the Doha time. It's so big, so large. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi even, the moment he doesn't pray, he doesn't, sometimes he got tired, he doesn't pray the night prayers, it's the Doha time, he will do his 12 rakat. So brothers, we have to start, you know, trying, training ourselves, especially that we enter in the month of uh, forgiveness. Allah Allah loves us so much that He knows our enemies that are holding us from what? Doing good. Who are taking us to make, to do evil. He said, I will change them. I'm going to change them the month of Ramadan. We pray, may Allah show us Ramadan. Amen. And may Allah show us a love for Ramadan. Amen. This is the month that we, Allah loves us. It's the month that we have to ask to the forgiveness of Allah. Sari'u ila maghfiratin min rabbikum. Run, hasten, and race to the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa jannah, and the jahdi jannah, heavens, gardens, arduha samawat wa la'ar. That is huge and vast, like the earth and what? The heavens. Or in that little what? Little muttaqeen. It is prepared for you know, specific people. Is those who are, the, you know, the, who fear Allah, who are conscious of Allah. And the Prophet Allah, Allah is telling us what? Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba alaykum zahim qabla kula allakum tattaqun. Allah has prescribed for you, as he has prescribed for the people before you, the fasting. In that way, you will gain taqwa. So for a person to have gender, it's taqwa promise. And Allah will only accept from what the people who have what? Taqwa. In the mind of Allah who will what? They are not taqwa. So Allah changed the shayateen brothers. And then the doors of forgiveness of Jannah will be opened. وَقُلِّ قَدْرِ أَبْوَابِ الْجِنَانِ And the doors, the seven, you know, doors of what? Hell, you know, hellfire will be closed. Locked. You will never see Jahannama, you will never see Jahim, all the Hawiya, all those. It's, it's closed, brothers. For you to what benefit that? Have good intention, brothers. Have good intention. Right now, before we pray, the problem we have regarding the Ramadan, ask yourself, are you ready for that? Are you ready for Ramadan? Or is just prepare food, uh, tea, and so some people, even in my people, they always say, Oh, I'm still waiting for my tea money. 
What do you mean? It's not the month to eat. But as we return to Ramadan, it's during Ramadan some people gain weight. I, I don't, it doesn't make sense. Ramadan is supposed to be teaching you how to hold yourself, take yourself away from dunya, from eating, drinking. But you see, you see here people will fight for food until the people will get angry because ah, you not put me around me. Brothers, it's not a month of eating. Even the one we prepare with, this year even I was even suggesting to the brothers, if we can just make milk and date, he said no one will stay in the masjid. The brother said, no one will stay in the masjid, they will go to the masjid when there is food. Of course. <laughs> SubhanAllah. That's we understand that people just, we have to control ourselves, brothers. Alright? So it's time to pray, inshallah, when we pray, inshallah. May Allah set from us. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, nashadu Allah, ilahi, 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 ilahi